Hello everyone at that Millwall podcast, thanks for having me on. I'm Luke from Swans Cast. I've been a bit ill this week, struggling with my voice a bit, so bear with me, but I'll get through these questions for you um, now and as best I can. Funny story, but I actually started supporting Swansea when I started delivering my local newspaper, The Evening Post, so it's probably about... 13, I think that was the age you had to be to deliver the papers. And they were always on the back pages at the time under Roberto Martinez in League One. We were coming up through the leagues. I think we just got promoted to League One not so long ago. Had a couple of good seasons and went up to the championship as well then, just after I started supporting them. Uh, the likes of Chase in Scotland, Leon Britton obviously was playing, you know, Gary Monk, Alan Tate, all of them uh, old legends, if you can remember from 15 or so years ago, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I started. So I used to sit down, read the back pages before I went out, delivered the newspaper, got really into reading about what was going on with the club. And some of my family was also lifelong Swans fans as well. My direct family, so like my parents, didn't like football at all, which is probably why it took me so long to get into it, because my granddad always had a season ticket. So as soon as I started reading about it, I got into it myself. I did go to a few games with him then. But unfortunately... That was a little bit too late for me to get a chance to go to the vet field. So it is what it is, but I've, uh, you know, caught up, I think, and uh, been a good fan ever since. Uh, so it's been a really poor start to the season for Swansea, and there'd be a couple of players I'd normally highlight. One of them would be Mark Rimes. Uh, he's not had the best season so far. It doesn't look like Duff is getting the best out of him. But if Swansea play well, Usually that means Grimes has had a really good game. Everything kind of goes through Matt Grimes and I think he will get us going. You know, if he can get his foot on the ball and get a bit of space, look forward, pick some passes out, he's definitely somebody you want to keep an eye out on. Um, another one will be Charlie Patino, who's come on loan from Arsenal. In midfield, he's the one that has made a difference so far. So he's had three assists already this season. He didn't actually play in our last game against QPR. I'm not sure if he'll feature this weekend on the in the game against Sheffield Wednesday. I'm recording this obviously a little bit early, um, but I would expect him to feature a lot more this season. So if he does play, he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on who can create an opportunity for our forward players. Uh, really hard question for me to answer at the moment, I'll be honest with you, because one of the big criticisms around Swansea at the moment is the fact that we can't tell what the strategy is, what the tactics are, you know, what's the game plan. So it's really difficult for me to say, from what I've seen this season, a way that Swansea are going to look to use their strategy to kind of exploit your weakness. Um, from what I understand, you guys play quite defensive or counter-attacking yourselves, so... Really not sure how that how Michael Duff's going to set up and fare against you. Maybe we'll have more of the ball, more akin to the fact that we were used to it under Russell Martin and some of the players are still in that mind frame. But that's not necessarily what Duff wants all the time. He wants to be a bit more direct and quicker with the ball and more pressing, but we just haven't really seen it yet. So it's hard for me to sort of answer that question because I'm not confident there will be any specific ones that are on display to combat any weaknesses. Probably a nice one for you to hear, I guess. I think Millwall will definitely be favourites. Swansea, as I've said, have had a really bad start to the season. They haven't won a game yet um, as of recording. This is before we play Sheffield Wednesday. But, you know, if you're looking at it from a Millwall perspective, you need to kind of feel like you're going to want to escalate our woes, if you like, and make us feel even more sorry for ourselves than we already are. We're really not in a good place, so, you know, it's an opportunity for any team to get three points against us right now and make the most of the situation that we are in. So I think any team playing us has got to be confident of a result, especially if you're sitting in the top half or mid-table areas. Um, you know, you should be probably giving us a good game. I think you'll pose the biggest threat attacking because we're not the best at defending right now. Some hangover from Russell Martin, Swansea last year. Look at Southampton right now if you want an example of exactly what I mean there. Duff's trying to sort that out but haven't quite got it. But as a result of that being the priority, we haven't seen any of the other areas that he wants to bring in here yet. And that's kind of why we're in this situation and why the fans are not happy with what they're seeing. 
in terms of uh, areas that we will dominate, not sure because we haven't really dominated anything this season. Maybe we'll have the ball in non-offensive positions and look decent when we're not being pressed. But that's about it. I haven't really got that much positives to say right now because of um, what we've seen so far this season, which, yeah, I know you're really used to saying stuff like that, especially after last season, at least when we weren't winning last year, you'd definitely say we'd dominate the ball, but that's not our game plan anymore. Well, there's this thing called the Swansea way, which, to be honest, I was having a debate about this recently. I'm not sure how much of a positive thing that is anymore. Historically, it got us through the divisions. You know, I mentioned I started supporting them in Roberto Martinez era. Well, that's kind of the beginning of the Swansea way and through Brendan Rodgers, Michael Laudrup, a couple of others. We got to the Premier League, had a really good time of it. We had an identity seen as a club that done it the right way, you know, didn't spend that much money to get there and we managed to stay there for a while and we're doing well until it all unravelled. Ever since it unravelled, we've been on a hunt to kind of get back there, get back to the Swansea way. We've had periods where it has, you know, come back a little bit under Graham Potter, under Russell Martin, and then periods where it wasn't necessarily the priority under Steve Cooper and now Michael Duff, it would seem. And that causes issues in the fan base because, you know, that's our indent- our identity, what we've done well in the past, how we got success. So there's a general feeling that that's how we want to run. Regardless of the success, we want to make sure we're doing it this way and then hopefully success will come. So when we don't have it this way, it causes a bit of an issue, which is what we're kind of seeing at the moment. So there's a question on whether that's an outdated system and we're suffering from our past success a little bit. Should we move on and try a different play style and deal with that rather than get on the back of it and not support it, which makes it harder? Uh, But that's a different question for another time, I guess. I think we've got a few that are still knocking about that are really good at doing that and they do slot in and kind of do that sometimes. Um, but you could look at any of the ones I've mentioned already in this video. So you've got Leon Britton, Gary Monk, Alan Tate. You know, ones that kind of went through the leagues with Swansea when they had this successful period. Who can kind of tell the team now what the club means to the fans and the community spirit of it and try and show that important side of the club to some of the players who often just come and go with these days as another job, you know. Um, so, yeah, Liam Britton would be a definitely a good one. He's still knocking around as an ambassador and doing commentary and media stuff. And he's opened a few local businesses down in the area as well since he retired. So definitely someone that brought into the club and has made his life here ever since. An interesting question. I'll have to have a quick think about that one. Um so if, you, if your club's players organise a charity pub crawl, I guess we have this thing that's called the Mumbles Mile where it used to be back in the day you would walk from either way around, I think probably starting in Mumbles and do a couple of the pubs there. I can't go through and name all of them, but there's basically a long road that connects all along the coastline, Swansea Bay, connects Mumbles, which is an affluent area, a lot of pubs, a lot of quirky areas, you know, Nice place to go in the summer, especially. A little bit of a seaside resort and nice character down there with a few pubs. And you walk down this main road, it can it takes you all the way to Swansea City Centre and you end up on the famous Wine Street where there's obviously a lot of bars there as well. So I guess that would be the, the route to take for any sort of pub crawl in Swansea and you definitely have a good time along the way. And there's definitely a couple of bars serving local brewed product as well that I'm sure you'd love to get to try on the route. I think a lot of Swansea fans right now would give a really nasty answer to that question. Michael Duff is really not connected with the fans so trying to think of one that's not too mean really but um, I think a lot of Swansea fans would view him as a kind of Mr. Burns character. Oh, it's hopeless. I'll have to play myself. You know, he's making out like he's got the best for the for the club, best for the area, but personal gain, not really doing it for the right reasons. I don't necessarily agree with that, but if you look at the kind of um, 
the view on him at the moment from the fan base. That's definitely the way that people see him. They don't think he's bought into the town, sorry, the city, the the club, the culture, the community. They, you know, they they just kind of disconnected with him. And I think that's a decent comparison. But I don't think necessarily what Michael Duff is like as a person is just kind of the narrative that we've got down here at the moment. Excellent. <laughs> Well, I think Fleming is uh, very creative for you and he scores a lot of goals from midfield and we can't really score so much or create that much at the moment. So I think he would definitely be a good addition, even if it was for just one game to try and get us ticking, get us moving in the right direction. And I'm, I'm sure we would definitely appreciate him if we managed to get him. <laughs> I think social media is a really important part of um, football fan culture these days. You know, we, we as a podcast set up during COVID and we've, you know, social media is what's helped our podcast grow. We've got, you know, we've only got a little fan base, but we enjoy talking to them and making contact content for them. And I think social media has definitely been the channel that's allowed us to do that. Twitter, especially for us in terms of communicating with fans and you can you can see the same people who come back and they chat with you and the ones that have a decent chat and not just shout their your opinions and all that sort of stuff but yeah i really really think if you use it well it's definitely a good good positive it's just sometimes it can also go the other way where a lot of the loud voices are the ones that are maybe a bit negative and it's just shut, shutting up the bad stuff and trying to use it for the positive uh things going forward really it was the second lockdown i want to say 2021 so two and a half years about i think we've been going for uh we're called swans cast podcast you can find us on youtube um all podcast platforms spotify apple google all of them and also social medias with twitter being our most active <laughs> I think Swansea is a very unique and um, it's quite quiet for a city. So if you're not quite loving the big city life, you know, Swansea is still a city, still offers that, but a bit quieter. It's on the coast. It's got a beach on its doorstep. You know, the, the city centre literally goes out onto the beach. Um, you've got Gower Peninsula around the corner, a lot of lovely natural landscape in South Wales and not too far to explore the likes of West Wales as well. So... I think it's a really nice balance of city life and a little bit more country and natural life down here. Um, so yeah, I would say it's worth a visit for anyone that wants to come down for the game. And if you want to stay a bit longer and check the area out, there's plenty to explore and do. And I'm sure everyone that comes here for the first time will have a good time. Thanks for having me on again. And hopefully good luck for the rest of the season after our game because we really need three points. <laughs>